Hey Milliger fans, it's time for our flower favorites. We're your garden girls. Um, I'm Kara and this is my mom, Chris, and we love to talk about what is happening in the greenhouse right now and we wanna make sure that you are gonna have wonderful success in your own garden. So we wanna share with you, this is gonna be a new series for us and we're gonna talk about some of our favorites and highlight different categories. So comment below, let us know what you would like us to highlight or, or a topic that you'd like us to talk about and uh, we will share it here. So today, what are we gonna talk about? I'm so excited for this because um, you know, uh, this this is where we're headed in the right direction here, getting ready for spring and all of these beautiful blooms. This is just so well, exciting. Well, this is the specialty house that uh, we're featuring. And one of the great things about Milligers is that we bring the best of everything to you. Not only do we grow um, the whole gambit of flowers, but we also bring exotic tropicals to you. So they're coming, you know, technically from all parts of the world, and these are things that are magnificent performers that are not to be ignored uh, for your summer enjoyment. I wouldn't want to ignore any of these. I don't know. <laughs> don't ignore anything. Okay. Let's start with our favorite. I mean, this really. I mean, we get, we really do. Love yeah. Somebody this. asked, I mean, you know, what would be the one thing you'd put in a container, and I said, you know. It has to be a plant that really loves you back. And this whole group of mandevilla uh, is just extraordinary. And it's really expanding, too. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, not only we have some brand new color offerings, uh, this is the new yellow. And this is, you know, hopefully you can help us on this part of what is going to vine, what is going to be a bush, how did this even happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Manavilla, the Diplodenia, All right. they were cousins, but now they're married. <laughs> <laughs> well, it used to be two distinct families of Diplodenia, which tends to be the short, bushy types, and the Mandevilla, which is named after um, Henry Mandeville, a, a British diplomat. And so... And then the, they just lumped them yeah, into and, one? Yeah, and then it all merged into Mandevilla. However, growers still distinguish between the two. So you will see both names appearing on, uh, yes. Don't worry, we have got microphones. <laughs> we don't even care if an airplane or construction yeah, or airplane. anything. So, like on this particular variety, and there are so I'll many new closer. cultivars. Uh, Carol, bring it over. Um, uh, this is a family of... Uh, Diplodenia, which is the, the Diamantina, and this is a variety that can go anywhere from the 12 inches that you see it right now, meandering and or vining. So it can get. Yeah, up it looks a little bit here like it's gonna wants mm -hmm. to take off. Yeah, and so if you read the label, it'll say 12 to 60 inches, which is kind of a huge parameter. Um, so I think that you can just let some of these inches. meander all over the all over the container or you can provide uh, some type of staking. The most economical staking is to use like three plant stakes and make a teepee out of it like this. This is a little one, but you can See extend this. See these little this. bamboo sticks here? They cost, you know, less than a dollar a piece and you can get a five foot uh, extension that will accommodate any of the plants. In general, if it has a hoop or a TP, it is a vining type that even though it looks to be yeah, that just one looks short and bushy, um, this is going to be able to do some vining. But there's so much of an explosion of the availability that um, you're going to find every that. possibility here. Now this doesn't look like it's vining too much. No, this I will think be this a little is, bit bushier. This is gonna stay like a bush. <clears throat> These little tendrils here, will be a great indication. So, and if they do have a place to climb, so if you do create a trellis or that teepee, they will climb even faster. If they don't have a place to climb, uh, like my mom mentioned, it will meander a little bit more. No deadheading whatsoever. All of the spent blooms you see a few on here now, but that's because they're in the greenhouse and there's no wind in here. When it's outdoors, the wind will take care of that for you important thing is to let the plant dry out slightly between watering. It will grow in anything from full sun to a half a day of shade. 
I've so. even had great success uh, with customers who, you know, it's just on the east side of their house. We were afraid it was too shady. But um, we're like, let's give it a go because we love this plant so much and it does yeah. really well. So, I mean, it gets the full morning sun, the full, uh, all the way, you know, to about noon. So And the price range is going to be anywhere from six ninety nine to uh, seventy nine ninety nine for the ones the that are six, six feet footers. tall. Yeah. All right. But, um, Where would you like to jump well, to Well, I next? think the, the tropical that people have the most success with wintering in their home and keeping for many, many years would be the hibiscus. And uh, maybe because it's such Ooh, an wow. exotic looking flower. This is that is, all in one pot? Yeah, this is one that many of these have three or four varieties planted together. If, if it's either the bush or if it's braided. This is incredible. Um, some of them are called a quad. If it says quad on the label, there are four varieties braided together and you will enjoy a full uh, range of uh, How some beautiful. of these premium varieties. Hibiscus are heavy feeders and they love moisture. They again are tolerant of a lot of conditions starting with full sun to a half a day of shade. I love the tree next to you. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it over here. Oh, it's taller than I am. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the things that creates that instant gratification in your yard. And like I said, there are many people that say, my hibiscus is 16 years old this year. And they, if given enough sun, they will bloom in the house. If they, um, if you have them under lights in the basement, and you may not have that, but, um, but it's still easy to winter these over. So it's not uh, like a one and done, it's something that, that can be safe. So when would you bring these into the house? Like, you know, if they've been blooming all summer, we always have great success with our plants all the way, we say, you know, until frost, which a lot of times is the end of October. What's the next step? Yeah, well, sometimes earlier is a little bit better. The rule of thumb is when you start heating your home because that's when the night temperatures start getting pretty cool outdoors and the adjustment from outdoors to indoors is a little bit easier then. And you might want to cut back some of the foliage. This is a lot for the plant to support all through the winter. So a you lot just, of you times- You say about a third? A third is a great rule of thumb. Yeah, do you want to bring that- um, I do. That Fiesta one? This one? The one right behind it. So this is probably our most popular uh, kind of like the darling of the category. This is grown as a column, but the name of this variety is Fiesta. And it just looks like a party, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I love this columnar style. I had these at the end of my driveway last year. And uh, they just, they was nice because they were blooms, not just at the top, but they were really throughout the entire column. Yeah, I, as usual, these are, are heavy feeders and the, more food you provide, the better your results are going to be. Okay. Um, well, you know, the crazy thing is so many of these plants are from originating in other countries. Whether it's some of these are from South America, some are from Australia, some are from Tahiti. Am I going here? They're, yeah, we can go here. This is the um, Gerbras, which are really native to uh, parts of South America and Mexico. But I would wanted to draw your attention to this series. This is a Gerber daisy, and um, sometimes Gerberas have a little bit of trouble reblooming. And this is a variety that's been bred to change that up. And it's called Garvinia. And the whole idea, you know, when have you ever seen any plant throwing this many flowers at once? Well, plus all the buds that are coming here too. Right, it is just a blooming machine. And uh, that is the whole point of this series. So it's a patented variety. It's a little more money. These happen I to be- I love this color. These are $15.99 in a seven inch pot. But when you think about $15.99 and the fact that it's gonna be blooming for the next five months, I right. mean, how much does that cost? Well, it's about me, $3 right a month. $3 yeah. a month, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's explore. Let's look at the color while we, we've got, should we do some foliage? Yeah, I can grab those. So we usually talk about letting one material lead you to another. 
And when you use a tropical such as this croton, which is very often used as a house plant, you have everything you need to go forward with your plant selection. So when people come in the greenhouse and they say, I'm totally lost, I don't know what to do next. When you start with your inspiration plant, you can see all the colors that are in there and focus on finding that orangey red plant, the black, some of the and yellows yellow. and purples are even pretty, I think, with it, you know, because this foliage gives off that little purplish cast to it. But yeah, all just think about all the bright, fun, hot, tropical colors of yellows, reds, oranges, purples. Right, and you really can't go wrong with that. This is a hot sun lover, higher color in more sunlight. Love it. And we have that available as a little six inch plant, but we also have some in 14 We even inch have pots. some trees. Oh yeah, and we do have tree some big ones. But what gorgeous color. And the more sun it gets, the brighter the foliage gets, which I think right. is incredible. Right. So that Ooh. brings us to talking about some things that may not be known for their flowers. Again, every plant has some kind of flower. This is the flower on this caladium, which is buried inside of here, but it is not really what we're growing this plant for. So the wonderful foliage. And again, this is, let's say this is in the shade and everything you need is right on that large leaf. So there's that rich burgundy, there's a soft pink, there's a kind of a vanilla white, and then a lush green border. So this gives you everything you need to go out and pick the companion plants. Oh, I know, I just, uh, caladiums are some of my favorites. Uh, the most important thing to take note of, especially here in Wisconsin, is that they really, really can't be out until the end of May, beginning of June. I mean, you can keep it as a house plant, but they just don't like that cold weather, especially cold soil. Yeah, in Victorian times, there were, um, you know, thousands of cultivars. And so um, yeah. this is a plant that was originally grown as a house plant. It does have a bulb, so it does have a dormant season, but it can be saved from year to year. Really, really pretty leaves. So elegant. And the companions to that, which is one of my personal favorites, are the alocasias and the colocasias. And um, sometimes we're looking for this a quiet, restful, um, just, just very elegant uh, look to the garden. And I think that anytime you have distinctive veining like this, um, it's just, just a pleasant surprise when you come across a container of this in a shady garden. Well, and this is so soft and velvety, which is why I really um, just love the texture and the this feeling of it. This is a new it. variety for us. Uh, it says here black velvet, um, but again, it has that velvety uh, texture to it and very pretty. And again, that quietness in the garden, I absolutely love it. So lots of options there. So the other um, end of the spectrum would be the ones that are full sun tolerant, and those you may know as elephant ears. Um, the the, the uh, size of the leaf can be as large as an elephant's ear. They get um, eight feet tall, and they're magnificent. That's a great backdrop. Many people that have a pool or a pond, they use this to help set the atmosphere. Um, so we go from a full shade to a full sun situation, depending on the variety. So watch those labels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was on the card. I don't know if it's oh, yeah. really tropical, well, I but I know up. you like it. So. Well, I love fuchsia. Um, my folks, Dan and Joan Milliger, always uh, had a lot of fuchsia baskets around there, hanging from the eaves of their home. And um, Hummingbird Sometimes, magnets. Yes, it is. And guaranteed to bring hummingbirds. It doesn't have to be a red flower. It just has to have the right kind of a tubular shape to it. And we're fortunate to have these little, what we call standards, or anything in a tree form like that is considered a standard. And um, fuchsias, the only, they do not like hot sun and they don't like wind. Other than that, they are very giving. They will bloom all summer. Again, a plant that easily can be uh, carried in in the winter time. They are heavy feeders and uh, enjoy uh, uh, a, a balanced plant food. 
But as you can tell, everybody likes to eat, just like we do. Um, the plants like to eat, so it's really important uh, not to just not only just water your plants, but make sure that they're getting the proper fertilizer too, that we'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, while we're doing some of these exotic plants, um, the bougainvillea, which is, uh, and you've probably seen this in Florida or in the Southwest, this is sometimes called the paper flower because the bracts uh, are almost uh, very thin and like tissue paper. It's a beautiful plant blooming all summer, likes a very hot, fairly dry condition. They do not like wet feet. It's important not to overwater this plant. And we do have little starter yeah, plants. Yeah, this is a great, this would be, I mean, just a great um, specimen. This is in a, in a tree in that standard form. Uh, but then we also offer them individually where you can get just the plant itself, uh, which would be great for containers or maybe starting your own hanging basket, something like that. This could be done too. But you can see um, it's the leaves that actually change color into that uh, paper look to it and so they're just starting to change color here on this smaller plant. And the baskets that we have this oh, year, they're amazing. Oh, basket because the baskets are phenomenal and many people just, you know, skip these steps and go right to a luscious basket. Instant um, gratification is okay. Yeah. I just set them there. All please. right. Um, well, the Elstromeria, again, this is a great cut flower and we grow it in about seven different colors. This is, um, I think it's native to West Africa or something, but I mean, that's the whole point. We are so fortunate to be able to draw on all parts of the world and enjoy these beautiful flowers. I, I always think of someone like Thomas Jefferson, who, who was like probably the first plantsman that cultivated uh, a large amount of plants from all, all over the world. And um, we can broaden our horizons and our scope and just have a, a wonderful summer surrounding ourselves with all of these wonderful plants. Oh, okay. The finale. Well, these so are pretty. cannas. And again, this is a bulb plant just starting to come into bloom and this will be, become very large. It'll become like five to seven inches tall and uh, almost as wide. This has a bulb. And years ago, this was a super popular plant that is coming back into uh, fashion again. Uh, uh, total height will probably be somewhere between, depending on the variety, 36 to 60 inches. And um, so this is, commands a lot of attention in the garden. They are somewhat shade tolerant, so they could take a half a day of shade. Uh, but uh, also grow in uh, full sun if you have it. Well, great for containers. I mean, that. Yeah, and Kara really uses a, uh, the very often in the center of a container. Those large leaves are so commanding and they kind of set the stage for all the underplantings. Yeah, they're just beautiful. And the most important part, again, we talked about the, uh, how important it is to water, but as you heard, a lot of these plants are heavy feeders. And the reason why we want to, want to make sure that we're fertilizing is because um, it just, it's so rewarding. You're just going to get such a healthier plant, but also more blooms, which is a lot of times, I mean, most of the time. Flowers are good. Flowers are good. That's why we're growing these, um, to appreciate those. So it's something really easy to incorporate. Now, there's lots of options. And the number one question when people are looking at their fertilizer, um, Elgo Plus is our fertilizer of choice. And why is that, Mom? Well, first of all, it's organic. Secondly, um, it's the number one fertilizer in Europe for a reason. Um, people have simply, very simply, have success with it. Uh, I had a woman in the greenhouse just yesterday, and she said, um, you know, you told me about that last year, and I never really believed it. I never really fertilized very much. And she said, oh my gosh, what a change. What, and my plants were immense. I had, you know, was, she was a total believer. And all you have to do is give it a shot um, this year. Try it out. And we will guarantee that you'll be satisfied. It's one capful like this in a sprinkling can full of water once a week. Now, you can, you can step it up and do more than that, but, but promise us once a week and you will have phenomenal results. My, my, uh, ch my choice is geraniums and patio plants. You don't have to have any geraniums 
uh, but this is just an, a nice all-purpose. And um, if you look at the numbers, the last number is the largest, and that will give you the most flowers, okay? What I like about it and what I really noticed is that um, not only do you get the flowers, but the foliage itself is healthier. So when we talk about petunias, I notice that they don't get leggy or stretched out. It's just a much healthier plant. Right. I think about what I would look like if I just drank water all summer long. I mean, I just, I feel like I would just be lanky and stretched yeah. out and maybe Crabby. not. <laughs> I'd be very hangry. So um, let's keep the plants happy. These are your pets and they bring us such joy. And it's really important to, again, uh, to continue to take, take care of them properly. Right. So let us know uh, what you want to hear about, what plants you want to explore, and we'll talk about that next. All right. We'll see you soon.